the, the main, the main uh, tool of a scientist is a skepticism. I mean, you, you cannot, you should not believe anything. So when he tells you we know everything, you have to ask yourself, do you really know everything or something? Okay. Well, no, I mean, it's not, I mean, we don't know everything, but we know something. We know the answer to any question. Okay. If you ask me anything about this structure, I can tell you. I can run the, the computer for a couple of months. Okay. But uh, at the end, I will tell you, okay, this structure is doing this and that. But we don't know the question. That's important, okay? And uh, this is basically most of the lecture on Friday is going to be about whether we can somehow also use the computer to ask the questions, okay? Because this is the thing that is really missing in our understanding of turbulence, okay? We, we, by now, computers are big enough that we can uh, simulate the navel stress equations very well, but we have to know what questions to ask. Uh, so, in the meantime, until, until Friday, from here until Friday, or from, from here until the future, we have to make do with uh, our questions. I can wait, which are our questions? Well, after all, we are not artificial intelligence, but we are not completely dumb, and people thought about which are the questions in turbulence, and the questions in turbulence is, okay, well, I told you, Five, I mean, five percent of the energy is being spent in this. Where, where is the energy coming from? Okay, and we know where the energy is coming from. I mean, this is uh, we have an equation for the energy, and the equation for the kinetic energy. There is something that is called the production term, and there is something that is called the dissipation term. The dissipation term has to do with viscosity. It will happen down there in the, in the small scale. The, the production term is the product of two things. One is the shear. This is the only place that you think about a shear flow. The only place where you have a, 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 a reservoir of energy is in the shear. The fact that the velocity here is higher than the, than the, than, than the, than the velocity there. So this is the, the energy source. And the mechanism by which this energy is being put into the, into the flow is in the renal stresses. So the production is the product of the shear and the, and the, 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 the renal stresses. So we need both the shear and then something to move the flow up and down to, 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 to extract the energy from the shear. Ah, so we, I mean, we had a, a candidate for that. In the in free, I mean, free shear flows, Kelvin Helmholtz did that for us. Well, here it doesn't work. Here it doesn't work. This was something that was, tested, uh, that was tried very early. And uh, the mean velocity profile of what one that flows looks like this. There is no inflection point. The Kelvin Helmholtz is stable. They are actually modally stable. There is no modern instability known. For, uh, for this profile, this turbulent profile of uh, boundary layers or things like that. Okay? So we have to look for something else. Okay? Uh, there's another problem that has to be dealt with, which is this question of different scales. I mean, this is something that people keep hiding. I also I mean, keep trying to hide it. Uh, I mean, somewhere. If you look at turbulence, turbulence is a multi scale thing. Okay? Gold bond turbulence is an even more multi-scale thing. There are all structures of all sizes. Okay? There are small structures, there are big structures. The difference between these and free shear flows or something like that, that here there is a wall, and the wall uh, classifies the size of the structure by distance from the wall. Okay? Near the wall, you only, you only have small structures. Away from the wall, you have big, big, big uh, structures. And somehow you have to... Uh, Find out which is the relation between these things, okay? And this, this is the, this difference can, can be seen here. This is a spectrum. Or this is a set of, of, of spectra. This is distance from the wall. This is wavelength, okay? Some wavelength, okay? And then this is the spectrum of the dissipation, which is the spectrum of the vorticity in this case, okay? And this, you see that this is a, a cluster along the Kolmorov scale. This is where dissipation always is, that's the definition of the Kolmorov scale. And here you have where the energy is, and this is also where the energy production is, okay? This is something that is large scale, okay? And there's a difference between where the energy is and where the dissipation is. If you are near the wall, then there are no large scales because they don't fit, okay? If you are away from, from the wall, you have both large scales and, and small scales. And you, you, you want to think how the the energy is being produced, you have to do something about the fact that there are energy producing things here which are small and energy producing things there which are large. Okay? And you can see 
that the flow looks very different if you look at if you look at it near the near the wall. These uh, blue structures here are velocity. Okay, and this is the energy. These yellow structures here are uh, vorticity. These are the vortices. And near the wall, they both have the same size. I mean, there is something of the order of my finger in there. Okay. When you look away from the wall, you still have the vortices, and the vortices have roughly the same size, okay? But the, the, the velocity is much bigger, okay? And this difference can be uh, quite high. Oh, yeah, okay, well, uh, that classifies the flow into something that is the viscous layer and, and, and everything else. And you, you tend to think that there will be a difference in the dynamics of what happens here and what happens there, although actually the difference is not as high. But then the, the ratio between these, these scales is actually quite large. And you, you can see that here, this is a picture of the turbulence near a wall. Again, you're looking into the wall, the flow is going, is going from left to right. Okay? Uh, you see these large scale reddish things, okay? which are things which are coming. These are the large scale structures which have been uh, created uh, away from the wall and they, they come down. And they are of this, the order of this. I mean, you see that these things are large. This and that's in there, this and that's in there. And the, the energy producing structures near the wall, they are like this. Okay? So there is a ratio between the size of this and the size of that. Okay? And somehow you have to take that into account. Okay? So, what happened? Well, people start looking at this. Okay? I told you already about uh, Robinson. Robinson sat in front of the, of the computer for for six months and decide, okay, these are the vortices and the vortices actually generate the renal stresses or the near the wall they are they create the renal stresses. Okay. They, they, they also do the dissipation from, from from our point of view, these are the things that create the renal stresses. And the streaks they have the energy. The energy goes from the, the renal stresses to the streaks. Okay. And uh, the problem is that there are many of these things, okay, there are many of these things and the whole thing is it's chaotic, and there are this special chaos. You can see that there is no clear organization there, and there is temporal chaos. You see, blows and, and decays in different places at different times. Okay. Uh, one tool that was useful was uh, this minimal box that we invented with Parvis Moin. Okay. Basically, you say, okay, well, I mean, how much of that chaos do you need? Okay. And I want to, I want again to insist in the, the theme of this of this talk. Okay, I'm talking about models. I mean, all the time I'm talking about models. Okay, uh, I'm, I'm also speaking about hundred terabytes. I mean, these, these hundred terabytes, we do. I mean, every, everything that we can with them. I mean, we POD them and DMD them and things, things like that. But at the end, we are talking about models. We are always trying to simplify the flow because this is the only reason why we want to think about the structures. I mean, if we don't want to simplify the flow, forget about the, the structure. Just do DNS or LDS or whatever you can afford, and th then you will get an approximation to the flow. But if you want to do something else, I, I was thinking this morning about this picture of the, of the flying eagle. Let's, let's try to teach an eagle to, to swim. Because the, the eagle doesn't understand the, the, the fluid mechanics. It can swim. It will drown, probably. Okay. The, the thing is that we have to, to understand the fluid mechanics because we want to. I came here, I, I swim every day, uh, so I'm uh, familiar with that. And I, I flew here, I mean, with no problem. I mean, somebody did that for me, but somebody understood, I mean, understood the, the, the fluid mechanics enough to let me swim and fly. Okay? And in, the, in this case, okay, the, the modeling thing is okay, can we get rid of at least the spatial chaos? I mean, instead of all this set of vortices and streaks, and you reduce this to a, a vortex and a streak. Well, not quite, but you can reduce it to a streak and two vortices. Okay? And the, the, the idea is just shrink this box, convert this vortex gas into a vortex crystal, if you want. Okay? Uh, this thing is going to be periodic with this size. And this size was empirically found. We started making the box smaller and smaller and smaller, and things things were unhappy and died. Okay? And it tends out to be the, the minimal box, and the minimal box is, looks, instead of this, it looks something like that. You need the thing that is here is identical, the thing that is there identical to the thing which is there. Uh, of course, I mean, this thing is still chaotic in time, but now it's not chaotic in space. Now, now we only have a few things. And the, the surprise, and it was actually a, a surprise, is that this thing doesn't hurt turbulence too much. I mean, it's still 
the um, fluctuation intensities, and this is distance from the wall. This is the intensities of string wise velocity, the span wave velocity, the wall and run velocity. They look roughly the same when you look at them there, here, or there. Okay? And then we can look at the box and see what, what is in there. What is the basic structure of turbulence? And this is a, a structure that we have found by, by uh, requesting something from the flow, not requesting something from our aesthetics, but from the flow. Well, it's a, it's a, it's a, a streak, which is this green guy there, and two vortices. Okay? And uh, this, this, this has been understood uh, I mean, much uh, before. The vortices create the streaks, because the vortices are going like this, Okay, there's one vortex this way here and one vortex that way there. Okay, when well, they're taking low velocity fluid from the wall up, okay, and they create a low velocity region here, and this guy creates a, a low velocity fluid from, from the wall up, so there is a, a, a low velocity region there, which is this gray structure. Okay, the vortices create the, the streaks. How the vortices are created as a, a more complex problem. Okay, at, at the same time, there was another group of people in a different, I mean, a, a different part of the world. It was basically in Agata, and then Walef, and Kawahara, and Kida, in, 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 in uh, Japan. They, they, were looking, they were looking for something that looks, at first sight, it looks completely, completely crazy, but they, they were able to do it. Okay? They were looking for steady state solutions to the Navier-Stokes equation. Okay? Uh, that means you have a shear, you have something that is you know it wants to be chaotic, but okay, it's not chaotic. I mean, there are steady state solutions to that, okay? And the, the, state, the, the, the state state solutions for that, this is just one, one particular case, but there are many. Uh, it's basically a streak, which in this case is, 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 is yellow, and two vortices, okay? So it looks very much like the thing that, you were, that, that we are seeing in the chaotic flow near the wall. Actually, it looks a lot like it. I mean, this is a... This is uh, the picture I showed you uh, uh, before, a snapshot of turbulence in, in a minimal channel. This is the picture of one thing, which is not a steady state solution, but it's a weakly oscillating one, and it's a, permanently, it's a permanent uh, uh, oscillation. It just goes, this streak here is wiggles a little, that, 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 that's all it does, and it will stay, I mean, like that forever. And when you see this picture, you sort of think that, these guys had something in there. Actually, to me, this is the, the best and probably the only evidence that we have that these structures are relevant from the, I mean, from the flow. Because we know that there is a steady state solution. We know that there is a, a, a solution that is able to maintain itself for a long time. And it's, and, and, and it's a, an exact solution of the, the, of the, of the Navistos equations. Okay? And actually, this basic structure of uh, strict to vortices is the same structure that these, these other people uh, adapted, I mean, uh, extracted from the, from the through flow after, also after looking for a long time. They decided that the flow was going to be a streak uh, and two vortices. Although, you, I mean, you look at the, at, the, at, the, at the times here, you realize that we were all working at, that, at, at the same time. So we all knew each other. And that, that's a problem. That's a, also a problem that you have to, to, to look at. How much are we finding this because we are looking for this? That's, that's, a, that, that's a different problem. We, we'll speak also about that on, on Friday. Uh, so what, what else I mean, do we know? Well, something that we also uh, learned very, very early is that this is the steady state solution might be a steady state solution, but the thing that you see in turbulence are not the steady state, they, they burst. Uh, you, you look at the, at, the, at the streak, for example, and this is a streak in, 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 in a minimal channel. They go from here and they, they, they stay for a long time, more or less straight. And uh, sometimes it becomes uncomfortable and wiggles and start to, to become, so, and then burst, okay? And at the same time, what it is bursting is creating a lot of vortices, okay? okay? So this is a bursting cycle, okay? That, 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 that is in there. And we we'll looked at this for a long time and then decided that this thing was, that there was something like a, a regeneration cycle of turbulence, okay? In which the vortices create the streaks. I told you how that happened. And then the streaks create the vortices. And there is one way in which 
Uh, we all agree that the vortices create the streaks. There's something like 20 different explanations of why the streaks create the vortices. And that usually is a sign of trouble. Okay? So this is okay. This is not okay. I mean, there's a problem there. This, there's clearly a problem in how the streaks create the vortices. I can explain it to you, and I can explain it to you in 10 different ways. And they're not the same. Okay? So, in the meantime, what, 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 what else happened? Well, this thing was extended from the near world region, where viscosity was important to the outer region, to the log region. And this was, uh, essentially, you, what you can do, you can create something that is also a, a minimal box in there, and then you can look at what happens at the scales, which are minimal for that box in there. Okay? And they are turbulent, okay, they are still turbulent. I mean, now they are, now the, even the, the structures that you got are, are turbulent because they are, the, the range is not very high. But you, you also see a streak, a single streak. And actually, when you look at what happens in time, the streaks are the, the same thing. And most of the time, it's straight, and at some point, it becomes unstable and, and breaks up. Okay? So this is the, the same mechanism, roughly, that happens near the wall, happens away from the wall. Okay? 